I'm one of those upgraded humans, you know. And I'm here to speak about transhumanism and what it means to me. I grew up during the 80s and 90s, watching the movies and TV series of that time. So let's start by jumping back a few years. So you see, it was not just Hollywood that was seduced by having the thought of part human and part machine. I have always found it very interesting to see how we can use technology to optimize a human being. So when I first heard there was this small microchip, so small it could be embedded under the skin and being able to talk with computers, this was absolutely a no-brainer for me. The chip is this small, so it's the size of a grain of rice. It's rigged with RFID and NFC technology embedded in a biocompatible glass container. It does not require any batteries to run. An American company first introduced these injection kits to the market. And you can order this online. And this is what you get when you order one of these. A pair of gloves, a drape, a gauze pad, a plaster in case you bleed. Some do. I didn't. And a syringe with a chip inside. When you get this shipped to your home address, you have already figured out that you be able to do this procedure yourself. But that would be really, really stupid, wouldn't it? If you did, and ending up hurting yourself, that would be the end of my story. So I would like to encourage all of you to go to a professional and let them help you. Go to a piercing studio. You know, these guys make a living for making holes in people. They know what to do. They won't hurt you more than necessary. No, seriously, go to a doctor or a piercing studio. They know how to help you the best. But when, when you're there, you're going to put it somewhere. And you can actually put this microchip anywhere you like in your body. But if you're going to use it on a daily basis, the most optimum place to put it is between the index finger and the thumb, right here. That's where most put people put theirs, and that's where I have put mine. Back in November 2014, me and 14 other biohacking interested guys met at a bar in Malmö. We were talking about how we can transfer knowledge between us and how we can grow the community. Our meetup group have, has up until this date grown more than a thousand percent. It's just a little bit more than a year ago. And a couple of guys in Finland started this annual biohacking summit. It's held this spring in the UK. This is body hacking convention in Austin, Texas. And in Florida, they have a grind fest. The biohacking community is growing larger by day. At this conference in November last year, we upgraded 63 people in one day. A couple of weeks later, we upgraded 23 more people in an, at an event in Gothenburg. And the interesting thing about this was that 13 of those 23 were women. And three of those women were more than 50 years old. This is getting more and more socially accepted. And you may wonder why this is happening right now. It's because of the Internet of Things. 
we humans, we don't speak Wi-Fi, we don't speak Bluetooth, we don't speak NFC. But with this chip implant, all by a sudden, we can be part of the revolution. As with all technology, it's all about timing. This technology actually existed 10 years ago, but it would never have happened at that time. We have just scraped the surface of what this technology can do. Really soon we will start seeing companies utilizing this tech, starting creating, creating products and services for their customers to use. I'm going to show you a few areas of where I have been experimenting with my microchip implant. I start by leaving the home in the morning, activating the alarm. When I get to my office, I unlock and open the door. When I approach my password protected computer, I unlock it. And when I go to the gym, I have my gym card details synced to the chip. Now, these are all things that clutter our lives. Things that we carry around in our pockets every day. Things that actually could easily be replaced by this technology. But there is one thing that is a special interest of mine, and that is banking transactions. So I gathered a team. A hardware engineer from Arduino, Juan Jutara, and a brilliant developer colleague of mine, Hector Valin. Together we created BioPay. BioPay lets you pay with a swipe of your hand. So I'm going to give you a short demonstration of BioPay. Now remember, this is not brought to you by some company. It's not a product. It's a proof of concept brought to you by some biohacking friends. It's always nerve-wracking to do live demonstrations, so keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to make sure that I am, that I am, will you please hold this, that I am logged in properly. Show password. Whoops. Now I am. Thank you. So here's the the actual actual uh, actual terminal window where I specify the amount. I want to pay. I want to pay one euro and press pay on tape. And then I have my reader here. This is the reader that reads the NFC chip. And the reading is done. Now, this software is run on a software, uh, on a Raspberry Pi at home at a friend's house. So it's kind of slow. Look at these numbers. I'm going to switch that to Euro as well. We, we should be receiving one Euro here in a, in a minute or so. Okay, it, will <laughs> it will take a while. But when that says it's complete, that the payment has gone through, we will... Yeah, there you have it. So what I did here is like... I was transferring money from one account to another. Here we're using bitcoins, but this could actually be used like whatever currency or anything you like. So this is just a proof of concept showing that this is actually possible. Well, thank you for your patience. Now I'm back to the presentation. There we are. I'm glad that went well. So let's go back to the event in Gothenburg where we upgraded 
23 people. There was actually more things that was interesting thing to talk about here. We preloaded their microchips with 60 US dollars because we was at this high-end store allowing them to browse the store and buy stuff. This was the first time we did this experiment with Biopay. And uh, I interviewed every single one of them afterwards and they all said it didn't feel weird. It didn't feel awkward. And to my big surprise, they all said it felt normal to pay with a hand. I was invited to a banker's meeting in Norway where we talked of this technology. We talked of the future of payments. And they thought it's, this is really, really interesting for them because they have been limited to these plastic cards that you all carry around in your wallets using every day for payments. Some of them equipped with an NFC chip. That means you can do contactless payments but regardless, the technology allows you to do smaller payments, say 20 to 30 euros per transaction, five, six times a day without even typing in your PIN code. That's the level of security we're talking about here. Now let me ask you a question, and please be honest. How many of you have forgotten your wallet at home at some point? That's pretty much everyone. How many of you have uh, forgot your hand at home? We can actually provide better physical security with this. And later on this year, we will start seeing microchips with an on-chip encryption module. That means we can also provide better digital security these plastic cards could easily be replaced by this technology. That's a quick one. At the end? At the end. Okay. Thank you. If we look even further into the future, we don't know what these microchip implants will look like. They will probably not look like the ones we're using today. They will look completely different. What we know is that if we stick a couple of sensors to them, we can read your biometric data and all by a sudden you are the next big data. For that to happen, we also need a processing power. And for processing power, we need some sort of a power source. And that's actually where this technology lacks today. We have not yet found an effective way of powering up microcomputers inside of your bodies. But there are actually a few things on the horizon. In Washington, a team of researchers have found a way to harvest power over the Wi-Fi signal. And a friend of mine is working in a researcher team here in Malmö. They have found a way to extract power from tears. How rad is that? Now, as these researcher teams are moving forward and electronic circuits are getting smaller and more power efficient, I would say that within a year, we are able to power up a microcomputer doing stuff inside of our bodies. These microchip implants, they represent a new paradigm. Up until now, we have used technology to replace lost body functions. Deaf people are getting hearing aids. Heartsick people are getting pacemakers. And those who tragically have lost a limb can have a prosthesis. These microchip implants are different. They are used by healthy people, people like you and me. As shown here today, this is no longer a fringe thing. It's breaking into mainstream. And for me, this is just the beginning of the upgraded human. Thank you very much and happy biohacking.